What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with a review for Pose Season 3, Episode Number 3. The episode was titled The Trunk. Alright you guys, so this episode we went into different time periods. So we will just talk about those time periods. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the review. And actually before we do that, if you guys are watching this video or any of my other videos on this channel <clears throat> and you're not already subscribed to the channel, do me a solid favor. And hit that subscribe button so let's get into it all right you guys so the episode it started up in 1978 so we see a young Electra and we see another young lady and they are working the streets so actually Electra it looked like Electra was giving the young lady the ropes of the street that's really sad when you think about it that a trans woman they couldn't, you know, people didn't want to work with them in those time periods and they had to resort to doing things such as, you know, being a prostitute, escorts, whatever you want to call it, and risking their lives and, you know, possibly contracting HIV and it developing into AIDS. It's just really sad when you think about that. And then the fact that their parents, some of them, some of their parents disowned them because they didn't want to have a quote, gay son or a son who thinks that you know she's a she stuff you know the ignorance basically so we see this guy he calls over Electra and she goes over to his car so he offers her $75 and a six pack of beer and she's like okay I'll take it but what you're gonna do next after we do this is you're gonna drop me you're gonna take me to a McDonald's and get me an apple pie because he asked her how much for a suck and fuck I'm like god like it's really sad it's just really sad just to hear that it's demeaning very <sighs> i mean all he asked you for is how much was sucking fuck like really and you know you think when you think of them some of them are probably married got families at home it's crazy so then once Electra does finish with the guy you know we see her and the young lady they're walking and the young lady doesn't have a keys to her car. And Electra is freaking out at that point because she has to go back to her mother's house, Tasha um, Jackson. So she's like, I can't go to my mom's house dressed like this. Like she's not going to be okay with that. So we see Electra as she's sneaking into the house and her mother is there. She's awake and she calls her by her old name, Dwayne. <laughs> Now, this scene right here, it really did, you know, it did just bother me just a little bit. I mean, God, your daughter is telling you that she doesn't identify as Dwayne anymore and she is Electra, but yet instead you keep telling her, I mean, you actually ripped her wig off. You were trying to take her clothes off. It's like, lady, what's your issue? But we did kind of get into what her issue was later in the episode. But at that point, it was just like, what the hell? So Electra's like, you know what? On the streets, I'm one way. I don't take shit from nobody. But then I come home to you and you do this to me. So yeah, I'm not going to sit here and deal with this shit. I'm going to pack all my shit up and I'm going to get out. So then as Electra goes to her trunk, she's trying to get her stuff out of the trunk. And her mother's like, oh, no, no, no. It might be your stuff, but it's in my house. So now it becomes my stuff. So you can leave whatever you have, which is on your back right now. Get out. I'm like, damn. Fucked up. Fucked up. Now, it's interesting. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, let's move on, you guys. These mosquito bites. All right, you guys. So let's move over to 1983. So in 1983, we see, which is, uh, we see Candy and we see Lulu. They are all living in the house and Blanc is there with a terrible wig and Electra. So Candy and um, Lulu are telling Blanca that they're hungry. And I'm thinking to myself, because she's, she's trying to cook something, but all the food in the house is spoiled. And Lulu's like, well, girl, why don't you get down on the streets and use your body, you know, to give me some food? I'm like, um... If you want some food too, you the one that's hungry. It ain't just me, you. So 
if you feel that I can go out on the street and sell my body, why can't you do the same thing? But Candy tells her, no, we don't want your snaggle tooth going down there messing up stuff and getting put in jail. And Electra agrees. She says, mother will go out and get, um, you know, take care of everything. So then we do see Electra. So Electra, she's on the streets once again. And I don't know if it was the same guy from 1978 that told her to come over to the car, but he called her by name to come over. And in this episode, and in this part of the episode, we are introduced to Lamar, Cubby, and Angel. We actually saw Angel as she got out of someone's car. So Angel was doing the same thing as well. And Electra went up to them and, you know, she, you know, she questioned them. She's like, what are you guys doing? And, you know, they're taking a smoke break. So we find out that Lamar and Angel are cousins. They ran away after their 16th birthday. Then they met Cubby. So they've been doing this stuff for months at this point. And, you know, they take turns, you know, they sleep in shifts so that nobody takes their stuff, which is really sad. Like, it's, really, it, it's sad when you see it, like, that parents were ostracizing their children and then your kids are living on the street. Like, how do you sleep at night? Like, that's the question that I have. How do you sleep at night knowing your child could either be dead and it's dead, sleeping on the streets, or, you know, any, I mean, so much stuff could happen to your kids and I don't understand how you can sleep peacefully at night knowing that like me at 18 when I would go out to the clubs and stuff my mom would still be up when I got home she said she you know she would nod off but she wouldn't completely go to sleep until I was in my in my in the house in my room in my bed that's when she would really go to sleep so I just don't understand how you could sleep comfortably and peacefully with your child out on the streets just doesn't make any sense to me so Electra, you know, the guy that called Electra over to his car, he told her to bring Angel with him. And Angel was going, you know, Cubby and Lamar told Angel to go, go, go. And Electra said, no, you don't go. Take this, take gather all your belongings and go to this address. And don't be alarmed by the woman with the, you know, her wig is tattered, but she has a good heart. She's talking about Blanca. And, um... She said, so go home. And they were like, okay, so who do we say sent us? Your mother sent you. So then we see Electra and the crew, and they're eating. She got them some food. She got them some Chinese food. And they, I think they were talking about how they want to go to China or somewhere and open up like a hamburger stand. And then the lights go out. So that is because Electra, she's able to put food on the table, but she wasn't able to pay the, the bills. So then, um, so we see them as they go, because Electra's like, you know what, she had a plan. So she went back to her mother's house to get her belongings, mostly her trunk, because there was enough stuff in there that she could sell to have a, a good enough money to take care of all of them. So we see them as they're trying to break into the house. So Electra does go into the house, and she and Blanca, they go into the room, Electra opens the trunk and Blanca notices a picture of Electra and her mom when she was a boy. So she takes that picture from her and then they get the trunk and they leave. Now, as they're leaving, her mom is there and Electra tells her, like, I'm taking my stuff. Like, she says, I'm calling the cops. She's like, okay, you can call the cops. But, you know, the, your neighbors over here, I'll make a scene for them and I'll call you by, by your name, Mommy. So do you really want that? She says, okay, you know what? Just take it. So it was in this scene that I realized what was wrong with Electra's mother. So Electra's mother, I guess she's had you know, relationships with men that have abandoned her. So when she got pregnant with Electra, she prayed for Electra to be a boy so that Electra could defend and take care of her. I'm like, ugh. So you just wanted another man to, God. That's alarming. It's like you were raising him to, raising Electra from a boy to be a, a man for you, be, a, be the man in the house, the, the provider, the, the caretaker, you know, the provider and all that kind of stuff. It's like, ew, that was your son, but now your son is your daughter and you need to respect that. 
because she then said we can work something we can have a compromise where you can tone it down and Electra was like absolutely not I've tried my I've gone my whole entire life trying to you know I've gone my life doing that I'm not doing it anymore so if you don't like it fine that's it so then later on, we see Electra with her condo. They got the condo. They're like, um, I got this one. They were talking about, talking about stealing some stuff. She's like, you dimwits, I have a key. I own it. This is ours. Like, this is our place. We don't have to worry about anything. So Blanca goes into the closet, and she notices the trunk, and she opens the trunk up, and the only thing that was in that trunk at that point was the photo of Electra and her mother. So Blanca, at that point, she knew that Electra had sold her things, so that way they could have this place over there, you know, a nice roof over their heads with, you know, electricity, running water, and food. But let's move on to 1994, you guys. All right, you guys, so now we are in current day 1994. So we see Electra. Electra is being watched by the cops. So you guys remember, they shut down the Hellfire. So Electra now, it, it looks like she's opened up a business where she is a phone sex operator. So she walks into the office and she listens to her voicemail. There was a message from a guy on there. Then there was a message from a, one of her girls saying that she wasn't going to be able to come in for the night. And then Lulu had left a message saying that, you know, she's okay. Even though, you know, after she's okay, after Angel ditched her for sober living. I'm just like, why didn't you go to sober living? You know, this is so. This is still 1994. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that all this stuff is is um, is months, months, because I was confused last week with the opening two episodes. When we oh, first episode one, we saw Angel and Lulu. They were on drugs, but then you know they were just smoking a crack, the smoking the weed laced in the crack, and then the next episode they full blown crackheads. So I'm guessing it's I'm guessing it's just sporadic. Hmm. And I wonder how many episodes are we gonna be in 1994? Because I saw on the View last week with Billy Porter, he said that the show is gonna end in 1998. So they're gonna do some time. They're gonna actually with this episode, I'm, I'm seeing it. They're gonna do time jumps. I don't know how often they're gonna do it, but well, we only got what now? Four more episodes. But they're gonna. I'm feeling like they're gonna be doing a lot of time jumping. So the cops come into um, Electra. They want to take Electra down to the station. They don't tell her what they want to take her to the station for. So then we do see them. So they're questioning her about her business because she said, you know, everybody here got their paper. So I don't know what you want. So was it, I mean, was it against the law to be a phone sex operator? Because I mean, on the, <laughs> this is 94, right? But they had those infomercials back in the day. I don't know if that was like, I don't know what year that was, but I mean, if you guys watched them infomercials back in the 90s, call now. You know, those phone sex hotlines, those were hot back in the 90s. Actually, they're still, they still around to this day. I, I know you can text people. Very interesting. But, you know. So then they tell us, you know what? We can get a warrant to, to go to your house, go everywhere to get whatever we need. So she's freaking out at this point. She's like, let me call my lawyer. So she calls Blanca and she tells Blanca about them wanting to, you know, go get the um, get the warrant. So she tells Blanca she needs her to go to the house, to her condo, and check on that, you know, get that trunk. I was like, oh, God, not that guy, the dead guy. So then we see Blanca and Poppy. So Blanca and Poppy, they went over to Electra's to get um, the, the trunk. Now, she also, uh, Electra asked her how we would get in. She said, Ricky is standing there. So, Ricky lets them in. So, they um, they go to the trunk. And you guys remember, in the, in the um, closet, there's a whole lot of air freshener. They're like, what the hell is going on in here? So, then, you know, they um, they go to lift the trunk. And they're like, what's in this trunk? And they want to open it. But Blanca stopped them. And she eventually told them what was in the trunk. She told them what happened with Electra and that guy. So they managed to get the trunk out and get it back to Blanca's place. And they put it in Damon's room and they covered it up, but they didn't mask the smell. I mean, this is impromptu. So then Christopher comes over and, you know, he's asking how was Electra and Blanca tells her, tells him that, you know, she got arrested. 
they haven't said a bell yet, but we're waiting for them to say bell. He's like, okay, so when they said bell, I'll go with you. So then he notices the smell and he said, what is that smell? She was like, oh, it's just Poppy. You know, he came in from the gym and he didn't, he didn't shower. He says, nah, that ain't Poppy. He said, that's coming from this room. And she's like, oh, it's a dead rat. He said, baby, that's smell like a, a hundred dead rats. So then he's like, oh, it's coming from right here. So he went to open the trunk and Blanca told him, no, don't go through electric things. She wouldn't like that. And Christopher was like, you know what? One minute I feel like we closer to each other, but then there's other minutes when I feel like you just pushing me away. You keep me at arm's length. So then she eventually tells Christopher what's in, you know, in the trunk. So, you know, Christopher tells her, you know what, whatever you need, I'm here for you. I got you, which was really surprising to me. But, you know, it is what it is. So then Blanca gets the phone. They get a phone call. Poppy tells Blanca that they sent Bell for Electra. So now they're going down to the jail to get Electra out of jail. But they also have to figure out what to do with this damn trunk, with this man's decomposing body. Ugh. It's decomposing. Decomposing in rigor mortis. Rigor, rigor mortis. Is that how you pronounce it? Whatever. So... They pick Electra up from jail, so it is Electra, it's Ricky, it's Poppy, it's Blanca, and it's Christopher, so they're driving. So they tell Electra that they're going to bury the body, she doesn't have to worry about it. And she's like, the hell? Like, who, we could be followed. And that's the one thing I was thinking about, like, y'all know the cops just arrested her, right? Y'all don't think that the cops are following y'all? For their sake, I really hope that the cops didn't follow them, because that, that was the one thing I kept thinking about the entire episode. I'm like, what if the cops are following you guys. So they take him to some some sewage, some sewage water. So I guess the sewage water, I guess it's, ew, that is nasty. So what is it gonna do, eat his body? Oh, decompose, he gonna decompose among waste. Okay, cool. Kinda nasty, but whatever. So then we see them, they are back at the house, Blanca's house, and, you know, um, Christopher tells, you know, Electra that he called one of his friends who's a DA, and they were get, able to get the charges dropped. Electra is not happy with that because she doesn't want to owe Christopher anything, and she really doesn't want to have to owe Blanca anything, and Blanca's like, you don't owe me anything. Like, I took care of that with Christopher, that was on me. And, Blanc and she was like, you know, and, you know, I know what you did for us years ago as far as the condo. You know, you sold your things, so consider it as, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a solid. So then she tells her that she got accepted into nursing school, and they celebrate the fact that Blanca got into nursing school, and that is actually where the episode ended, you guys. Good episode. Like I said, it was, I, I just wonder if we're going to do a lot of time jumps in the next coming episodes. But that is the review, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Like this video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. And until the next one, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and socially distance, and stay blessed. And we will all get through this together. All right, you guys, that's it. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow for the mid-season finale of The Oval and on Thursday, we will um, actually, the mid-season finale of the Oval on Tuesday. Then we will be doing um, Real Housewives of New York on when, nope, that's tomorrow too. So we, yeah, we'll have Real Housewives of New York and the Oval. And then on Thursday, we will have Growing Up Hip Hop, the original. So until then, you guys, bye.